Baseball began as a pastoral game played in wide open spaces. As its popularity grew, it spread to our suburbs and cities. In 1816, an ordinance was passed in the village of Cooperstown, New York, restricting the play at ball after shop owners complained about broken windows. They didn't know it at the time, but what the future Baseball Hall of Fame needed wasn't another law, it was wiffle ball. In 1952, 13-year-old David Mullaney wanted to play a game of baseball but was confronted with the friendly confines of his own backyard. Ingeniously, he and his friends discovered that a perforated plastic golf ball worked well because no matter how hard they hit it, the ball was too light to travel very far and too soft to break any windows. Unfortunately, it was next to impossible to make this light ball curve or break like a big leaguer. But David kept trying until his arm got pretty sore. Concerned, his father, David N. Mullaney, a former semi-pro pitcher, set out to make a ball that would curve on its own. With a razor blade and some tape, David sat down at his Fairview, Connecticut kitchen table with some round packaging used in perfume bottles and cut the spheres in half. His original patent shows 17 rectangular openings in one hemisphere of the ball, but it was eventually discovered that eight oblong openings worked best. When it was perfected, virtually anyone could throw a ball and make it curve a foot or more. This made it very hard to hit. So when batters swung in it, they often whiffed. And that's how the wiffle ball got its name. When David failed to get the financing from his bank, he ended up borrowing money from friends and mortgaging his house to buy some injection molding equipment and lease space in a nearby factory. Wiffle Ball Incorporated was born. Their first sale was to Three Judges Restaurant, a diner and motor lodge in nearby New Haven, Connecticut. The restaurant displayed the wiffle ball in its front window for the 1953 price of 49 cents. Soon word of mouth propelled the ball beyond the backyards of Connecticut. David's first big break came when he was pitching a skeptical sporting goods buyer. He closed the deal by throwing the wiffle ball against the office window without the window or the wiffle ball breaking. And that's how the wiffle ball ended up in Woolworths, the dominant retailer of the day. Wiffle wasn't just a ball, it was an entirely new sport. The original instructions explained it. Wiffle ball was designed to take the place of baseball and stickball for boys and girls in backyards and city streets. Ball chasing and base running have been eliminated. The minimum number of players required to play wiffle ball is two, the pitcher and batter one player to a side. Hit a ball that lands uncaught up to 20 feet from home plate, you score a single. A distance of 21 to 40 feet is a double. 41 to 60 feet is a triple, and launch one more than 60 feet uncaught and you clear the bases without running a step. The success of Wiffle Ball allowed Wiffle Ball Inc. to move into a modest office factory in Shelton, Connecticut. In 1960, New York pitcher Whitey Ford appeared in this TV ad showing kids how to make the Wiffle Ball curve. With the original Wiffle Ball, it's the ball with the holes on one side. You throw it just like a baseball. It curves, and it's so safe. You can bat or throw it anywhere, indoors or out. Here, Whitey shows you how to throw curves immediately, just like a major leaguer, with the fabulous original wiffle ball. Use an overhand delivery with all the wiffle holes on the left, and your pitch will curve to the left. Throw the wiffle ball with the holes on the right for a breaking curve right. For a curving upshoot, deliver sidearm with the wiffle holes on the top. For a major league drop, Pitch sidearm with the holes on the bottom. It's that simple. Watch Jimmy curve the ball. Johnny's learned too. So pitch and bat like a big leaguer with the original wiffle ball and bat. At first, the Mullaney suggested that you use a broom handle to play. But a year into their venture, with sales increasing, David struck a deal with a wooden handle manufacturer to produce the very first wiffle bat, called the Wiffle King. It was 31 inches long and had a barrel that was only about an inch in diameter, not much thicker than the broomstick that inspired it. The second generation of wooden bat was the official wiffle bat and was made from 1955 to 1972. 
and the classic plastic yellow bat was first produced in 1962. Most of us had our own ground rules, which made a backyard wiffle ball game uniquely our own. Anything off the tool shed was a ground rule double, anything into the oak tree branches scored a home run. In the mid-1990s, the internet connected full-grown adults who found out that there were others who shared their passion for anything wiffle. Tournaments like these are officially sanctioned to use the wiffle name, which the Mullanies do through their website. There's even a website called wiffleballtournaments.com where you can find a game near you. If you go to one of these serious tournaments, don't expect to see much yellow plastic. The balls haven't changed from their 1953 specs, but for serious players, the bats certainly have. In 1999, in response to the growing number of adult players, the Mullaney family contracted with the Adeline Bat Company to make the first aluminum wiffle bat, the Wiffle Pro. But not every tournament features cutthroat swingers of aluminum. You can also find tons of charity tournaments that attract company-sponsored teams of do-gooders willing to take a swing at a good curve for any good cause. David N. Mullaney died in 1990 at the age of 81. He saw his invention reach millions, pass the reins of the company on to his son, and was alive to see his grandsons take over. We really just love what we're doing, the third David to preside over Wiffle Ball Incorporated told me. David's brother Stephen agrees. Truthfully, we can't see ourselves doing anything else, he said. It's a unique business. That's an understatement. It's so unique that the packaging hasn't changed in 67 years. Here's the first box again, and here's how it looks today. Still made in the USA in Shelton, Connecticut. Wiffle Ball Incorporated remains a family-owned company making a legendary product that continues to fly in the face of the $27 billion toy industry, which decrees that any hit toy needs to be heavily promoted and advertised. But Wiffle Ball Incorporated haven't advertised their product since that Whitey Ford commercial you saw earlier. They just let their fans do the talking. Low overhead and no advertising budget means you can still buy a wiffle ball and bat set for about six bucks in nearly any hardware store in the country. In 2017, the wiffle ball was inducted into the Toy Hall of Fame. The first thing the Mullanies did? Thank their fans on their website. To those who call themselves wifflers, the appeal of this product goes way beyond the ball. It's more summed up with words like tradition or even rite of passage, and it's all for the love of the game. Happy Independence Day. Please consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching.